Well, today we're in part two of hashtag goals. And last week we talked about relationship goals. Hope you enjoyed that. And before we dive into part two, I wanna say hey to Gwinnett Church Hamilton Mill who is celebrating their 100th day. And Gwinnett Church Sugar Hill, can we show them some love? So way to go, Gwinnett Church Hamilton Mill. That's so awesome, that's so awesome. And so today we're gonna go to a different hashtag goal and we're gonna look at work goals and career goals. But trust me, if you don't have any work goals or career goals, if that doesn't apply to you, today's topic will most definitely apply to every single person in the building and at Gwinnett Church Hamilton Mill. So let me tell you how we discovered this Uh, uh, several weeks ago. uh, One of the things we do on Gwinnett Church is we try to bring some incredible people in to speak to our staff so that we can continue to get better to serve you. And uh, I brought several weeks ago a a really good friend of mine, Cliff Robinson, in to speak to our staff. And he did such an amazing job. Lauren Espy on our team said, you know what? We should have Cliff come in and be part of the Hashtag Goal Series. And I thought that was an incredible idea. So um, this message that you're gonna hear today is absolutely fantastic phenomenal, but I want to tell you a little bit about Cliff. Cliff is the Senior Vice President of Operations for Chick-fil-A. Maybe you've heard of Chick-fil-A. And um, so they they have 2,300 locations, all right, 2,300 locations. Cliff serves operators uh, around the 2,300 locations around the country. They're about to go into Canada a little later this year. And Cliff does an amazing job. Now, I've known Cliff for 22 years. So Cliff, one of us is getting older. One of us is getting older. And Cliff is not only an amazing leader, he has uh, amazing parents who are here today. They, uh, Gene, his, his, his dad, and his, his mom, Edna, they grew up in the Chick-fil-A. They're Chick-fil-A legends. Uh, his wife, Stacy, is here. And can we give a hand for the Robinson family for being here today? I'm so honored that you're here. And so I asked Cliff, I said, Cliff, I know it's Sunday, I know it's your off day, but could you come and share this message today? So you're gonna be very, very impacted by this. So would you do me a huge favor at both Gwinnett Church locations, please help me welcome Cliff Robinson. Well, good morning. Well, thank you. Good morning, Gwinnett. And good morning, Hamilton Mill. It is an unbelievable honor to be here. For 52 years, I have sat where you sat in rows. And I gotta tell you, I am scared to death. (laughs) I am nervous. This is like a big deal. I feel this pressure. And that's what I wanna talk to you about this morning. I feel this pressure because I am not a pastor. I am not a preacher. I'm a chicken salesman. (laughs) I feel this pressure because there's somebody at Hamilton Mill that's there for the first time. There's somebody here. You invited somebody, and I know what you did because I've done it. You walked in those doors, and you said, I hope Jeff's speaking. I hope Andy's speaking. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) I feel this pressure because, honestly, I want to do what I normally do. I want to... Sell chicken. I want it. I'd even give you chicken, but it's Sunday. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. You have felt this. Different reasons, but you felt this. It is real and it is a reality. We literally could take a microphone and pass it row by row person by person, and you could tell a story of how you have felt that pressure. In life, pressure walks with us side by side. Stacy, my wife and I, we had three kids in four years. Pressure. (laughs) In those four years, we had so much love and joy like come into our family. But at the same time, we had so many dirty diapers. (laughs) Pressure. We now have three kids in college. Three kids, three colleges, three different states, three tuitions. You getting it? (laughs) Pressure. Those kids, they feel the pressure to make grades and to finish class and to graduate. And I remember when they didn't get in the schools that they wanted and the pressure there, the pressure of uncertainty, the pressure of loss, and here the pressure of work. 
It's interesting because pressure comes in success and failure. Pressure comes in progress and lack of progress. In your work, when your business is thriving and growing and innovating, there's pressure. When your business is declining and there's threats of layoffs and cuts, there's pressure. Pressure is a reality. Let me give you an example in my world that I think you'll be interested in and you can relate to, and it'll remind you the next time you experience this. So Chick-fil-A had an incredible year last year, and you've probably read some stuff in the media, but we are so grateful for customers, for you, who follow the cow's advice and eat more chicken. (laughs) We really are. And we have some of the highest volume quick service restaurants across America. We are incredibly grateful, but it adds so much pressure. Have you ever gotten in a Chick-fil-A drive-thru line and you're 10 cars back, 15 cars? You're so far back, you're in the street and you've got to still get in the parking lot. And you're sitting there wondering, how long is this gonna take? And you're wondering why that guy four cars up is breaking in because you've already been there a minute. There's pressure. Well, that pressure backs all the way up into the restaurant. It backs up into the drive-thru lane, into the drive-thru cockpit, which is just on the other side of the window. It It backs up into the kitchen. And we are trying to figure out how do you relieve that pressure? We've done stuff where we brought people outside the restaurant. You may have experienced it. There's people with iPads taking orders, people taking cash, people even delivering food outside the restaurant, all to relieve pressure. We all experience pressure. Our operators do it, you do it, we do it. The reality is it exists. As a friend of mine has said, yes, but the question I wanna ask you this morning is how do we deal with pressure? How do you deal with pressure? What do, you, what do you do with it? You know, there's unhealthy ways to deal with pressure. We opened a Chick-fil-A restaurant several years ago and we were trying to promote it and get people to come and we invited a well-known, really well-known Major League Baseball player to come and to sign autographs. And it was an attempt to promote the opening and get more people there. Well, it worked like a charm. There were hundreds of people. Dining room's full, the parking lot's full. There are people sitting in the grass waiting on this Major League Baseball player. It was wonderful with one exception. The Major League Baseball player didn't show. I will never forget when we went and had to share with all the crowds, he's not coming It was interesting and fascinating to see all the responses. Some people were literally paralyzed. You could see them. They literally, they went, oh. You could tell this was like the highlight of their day, and they just didn't quite know what to do. There were other people that panicked. They got mad, they got angry, and all they wanted to do is yell at somebody with a name tag on. There were others, they went into protect mode. I remember one individual specifically. He got there two hours early and he told me over and over again, I was here two hours early, I'm third in line. I have this ticket. Am I still gonna be third in line when you reschedule this? He's protecting. These are pretty natural. Pay attention, just watch. The next time you see a pressure response, you'll see people respond this way. Now here's the deal, let's don't do that. The question I want to say, how do you respond in a healthy way? How do you respond to pressure in a healthy way? So I have another illustration, another example. This is a henny penny. And yes, that is really what it's called, a henny penny. We didn't name it, but this is a piece of equipment that cooks Chick-fil-A. It is a pressure cooker. It is a machine that manages pressure. This is a piece of the secret and the magic and the recipe of Chick-fil-A. It's really simple. You take Chick-fil-A fillets, you put them in this. This lid has a seal. You close it, tighten it, and that allows pressure to start creating in this vat. 
There's a gauge back here that measures pressure. There is a dead weight in this canister back here that regulates pressure. When the pressure gets too great, this dead weight moves up a little bit and releases pressure. And this pressure allows us to cook Chick-fil-A moister and quicker. Now, what happens to that machine when it doesn't have this? It becomes a bomb. What happens to us when we don't have something that regulates pressure? We panic, we protect, we're paralyzed, we explode. It's very healthy that we learn how to do what that little dead weight does. Now, here's the picture I want you to see. Is in the midst of pressure comes out this, the best chicken sandwich on the planet. <laughs> like, I want one, don't you? <laughs> Through pressure, you get an incredible product. And there's a principle that applies. Pressure with purpose. Pressure plus purpose produces progress. Look at it with me. One of the things I'd love for you to take out of here, pressure plus purpose produces progress. Now, maybe you're like me, and when you hear pressure, you think, I just wanna get rid of it. I just wanna eliminate it. When I feel pressure, it's bad, get away from it. But I don't think that's the way God designed stuff. And there's an example where pressure produces something wonderful. About 10 years ago, Stacy, my wife, and I, and our family, we found ourselves in the most pressure that we have ever experienced up to this point. It was pressure that we could have never imagined and never expected. Our oldest, uh, Adam, our son, um, he started having really serious anxiety issues. Those anxiety issues led to anxiety attacks, and they got extremely serious. On one specific night when he had really struggled with anxiety, he cut himself numerous times. On the way to the hospital late that night, I called his counselor because I was feeling pressure and I had no idea what to do. Here's what his counselor said. Cliff, when you walk into the hospital, you will lose control of your son. Child services will come, they will ask you some questions, and they will take over. Don't fight them. They will talk to Adam, and they will admit him in a psychiatric hospital. Don't fight them. Everything happened just as he described it. I still remember the pressure walking back several hours later into our house. I went up to Adam's room, sat on his bed, and I, the pressure was unbelievable. He wasn't there. He's in a psychiatric hospital. It was the biggest pressure point that I've experienced. I don't remember much after that for a couple of days. But I remember one conversation at work where a friend, we were talking and he made this comment. He said, Cliff, don't forget you have two other children. And that statement, Cliff, don't forget you have two other children, like shocked me back into reality. If you were here last week, it was exactly what Andy talked about. You remember? Andy said, in the midst of pressure, it can feel like your whole world, but it's not. There were moments where having a son in a psychiatric hospital felt like my whole world, felt like Stacy's whole world, but it wasn't. We had each other, we had our faith, we had family, we had girls. 
And there was something about that statement from a friend at work that started shifting our thoughts. You see, we had gone to North Point Church for a long time. Our kids had been involved and we had heard three principles that we had actually applied to our family. Trust God, honor others, make wise decisions. We heard those in Wombaland, in kid stuff. And we had said, those sound good for us, let's try them way back here. And in the midst of this pressure, those became like purpose for us. Those became this bigger cause. You know, there's an interesting verse that may help you here. Take a look at it. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now let's like look at it again. For we are God's handiwork, That's purpose. God has a purpose for our work and therefore that gives us purpose. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's progress. Purpose and progress. And it applies especially in times of pressure. So here's this principle again that pressure plus purpose can yield progress. So you might be thinking, all right, Cliff, I get it. Pressure and purpose, but still, how do I deal with pressure? How do I deal with pressure on a day-to-day basis? All right, I wanna give you an illustration idea that I hope that will help you that has helped me tremendously. So in whatever your situation is of pressure, here's what I wanna encourage you to do. I want you to take that situation and kind of take the aspects of it and spread those out over these three buckets. And I will tell you this, in fact, you can take anything in your life, you can take everything in your life and spread it over these three buckets. But today we're just gonna talk about pressure. So pressure. What of that pressure is in your control? And whatever is in your control, I'm gonna encourage you and ask you to consider, prioritize it, make it most important, and plan what you might do. What is it you could do next? Then there are also things, they're not in your control, but they're in your influence. These often involve other people. These either are where you need to get help from somebody or get somebody to help you. So here's what I'm gonna encourage you to do. Pick people who can help you. And then finally, there is some things in that pressure that you have no control over. Identify them and then pivot back to these two buckets. This is a critical point here. Don't live here. Don't even stand here too long. Don't camp here, don't pitch a tent here, don't stay here. What I see when pressure comes is most people wanna stay right here and worry and get overwhelmed. So let's think about these three points a little bit. When Adam, our son, was in a psychiatric hospital, we literally had no control. They told us we could see him 20 minutes, three times a week, and they told us the 20 minute windows. It's the only interaction we could have with him. We literally had no control. It would have been real easy just to live in this bucket, to worry, to get overwhelmed, to get embarrassed, and let that fuel us. It literally become who we are. However, there were things we were in control. We could control our response. Stacy and I could control that we're gonna do this with God. We're gonna do this together. We could do research and learn about anxiety. We could get with doctors and counselors and figure out what's life gonna be like in a week when Adam comes home. We could do that versus worrying. We could control our response, but we could not control our daughter's response. We could influence it. 
We couldn't make them talk to us, but we could ask questions that then maybe gets them to talk to us because they were more scared than we were. See how like it automatically changes? If you live here, it almost paralyzes you. But if you move up here, it almost energizes you. So, how do you deal with your pressure? What did you walk in these doors this morning? What do you, if you're watching on the screen, what, what do you have this morning that is out of your control and you need to let go of it? You need to pivot to one of these other buckets. In your pressure, who do you need to ask for help? Where can you get help? And let me take a time out here. I've been a part of North Point churches for over 15 years. And week after week, they do exactly what Jeff did this morning. Encourage people to get engaged and involved in small groups. Come to Starting Point. Sign up for a small group. And guys, if I can just talk to you, I know we don't want to do that. Why do they do it? Are they like tracking it? They just trying to meet a goal? Is it just they want to get you more involved? Here's one of the reasons we do it as a church is we know there's a Thursday coming where the pressure is gonna break. And if you have met on Sunday afternoon with a group that could influence you, it'll make that pressure in Thursday so much better. There are men and women who pressure is coming and we know it. And the ability and the gift of sitting in a small group with men and women who could help would be so powerful. Don't miss it. There's some of you that walked in, you're under pressure and you just need to pick what's in my control and what do I do from here? And it would help you so much. So let me share another point. Take a look at this. Do not be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about any pressure. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. What's it saying? Whatever bucket you're in, pray about it. Ask God for help. What's out of your control? Pray about it and pivot. Who are you looking for help? Who are you trying to influence? Pray about it. And then ask. For those things that are in your control and your next steps, pray about them. Pray for wisdom and direction and courage in some cases because some of those things will be incredibly hard. And then watch this. This is amazing. And the peace of God. And the peace of God. Did you walk in here thinking pressure and peace and we'd put those together? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, Chick-fil-A and waffle fries, those go together. <laughs> pressure and peace, those don't go together in my book. But what God's saying in his book, pressure and peace go together. And if you don't hear anything else, here's the one idea I'd love for you to walk out these doors in just a minute and see that you, you can find peace and progress in pressure. It may not feel like it, but you can find peace and progress in pressure. Now, Christ gives us an incredible picture, an incredible model of this idea. Let me share it with you. Take a look at these verses. This was written by one of the best friends of Jesus, a guy by the name of Mark. It was written a few days before Christ was crucified and he was killed. So just a few weeks ago, we celebrated Easter. These events took place right before what we celebrated at Easter. They went to a place called Gethsemane. It was just the name of the garden. And Jesus said to his disciples, those that were his best friends, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John 
That's his small group. That's the people who are influencing him and who could help him. He took them along with him. And then look at this. And he, be, he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Huge pressure. Now, you ever been in the hospital and the doctor comes in, the nurse comes in, and they tell you what they're about to do and then they say, this is gonna hurt. Well, let me just tell you, when the doctor says this is gonna hurt, it is gonna kill in pain. On the 10 point pain scale on the wall, it's gonna be a 12. All right, here's another thing. When Jesus says, I am deeply distressed and troubled. When Jesus says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, the pressure is gonna kill. It is huge. And then look at this last verse, last part of the verse. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, if possible, he's there with Peter, James, and John, who can influence, and he says, if this is in my control, could it pass? If it's in my control, I'll just skip this one but it's not, and I choose that it's not. This is in your control, God's control. Literally, Christ gives us a picture of these three buckets. And then think about this with me. This pressure point for Christ led to his death, burial, and resurrection, what we celebrated at Easter. Those three events become the thing that we put our faith in. If you're a Christ follower, that's what you put faith in. It's where you find purpose and peace and life. The very point where it was huge pressure became three events that give us purpose and peace. And when we fall into great pressure, we cling to those events and what they mean, and they give us peace. Here's one more example of pressure and peace. Pressure and progress, and how the two can come together. You can find peace and progress in pressure. So, what do you do with your pressure this morning? I have no idea what you walked into this room with. I have no idea what you who are at Hamilton Mill came to church this morning with if you're watching this through a screen, I don't know what your pressure is. This talk reminded me, Stacy and I sat back in this section at North Point. And Sunday after Sunday, we'd walk in with the weight and the pressure of a son with anxiety and having no idea what the next moment was. When Adam got out of psychiatric hospitals and we were working with counselors and doctors and psychiatrists. Um, they were trying to help prepare us for what could come and what was happening. And one of the doctors told us, you need to prepare yourself that Adam may never graduate high school. Today, 10 years later, Adam still deals with that pressure almost every day, the anxiety However, he did graduate high school. He's a junior in college. He gets married in 48 days. I don't know, I don't know if the pressure will ever not be real. I don't know what you've heard this morning and I don't know what you walked in with. All I hope you walk out with is maybe a story or a bucket or an illustration, but maybe our family might be an encouragement, might be an inspiration to this simple principle. Your pressure you can find peace and progress. It's actually God's design. 
whatever your pressure is, you can find peace and progress. And that's my hope, and that's my hashtag goal for you, and why I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share. Father, it is so much easier, even though it's nerve wracking, to talk about pressure on this stage versus live with it. It's so much easier to have some points and some buckets than the people who are sitting in this room, the people who are at Hamilton Mill struggling with pressure. Will you use something that happened today, something that was shared, some thought that somebody had, whether we shared it or not, something that would help individuals in the midst of their pressure? Would you give them courage? Would you give them strength to pivot in the things they can't control and take a step where they can? Will you help them to find people and pick people who can help? And I think you'll honor it. I've seen you honor it. It is your created order that works. And I'm gonna go ahead this morning and thank you ahead of time for what you're gonna do this week, this month, and in the days ahead in people's lives because they trust you with their pressure and they believe they can find peace, they can find progress in pressure. Father, we love you. Thanks so much for the morning. In Christ's name, amen. Wow. You know, somebody once left Chick-fil-A to go into the church business, Cliff. That's all I'm gonna tell you right now. So um, I'm not saying that God's will for your life, but I do wanna say this. Um, if you came in today and you thought, you know what, I'd, I do have pressure and I wanna talk to somebody at Gwinnett Church Hamilton Mill, Gwinnett Church Sugar Hill, we have an opportunity in the gallery for you. And if it's just a, hey, here's my pressure, I'd like to talk to somebody, maybe a next step, or you just wanna have somebody pray for you, that's what we wanna do for you. Now, next week, we continue hashtag goals, but between now and then, we love you guys. Gwinnett Church, Hamilton Mill, happy 100th day, and we'll see you next Sunday.